Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's try again. It wasn't. It's too good, so we'll, we'll try again. Good morning. Good morning. First thing off the bat. The rumors of my demise have been extremely exaggerated. Praise God. There are some rumors going around that I had to have emergency heart surgery and had two stents put in. Not true. But I will go ahead and tell you the results of the two CT scans. The first one on the heart did reveal that I have significant calcification of the main artery in the left side of the heart. I will be having a cardiac catheter on October 18th. So please keep in prayer there. But again, no stents yet. If they see that it's necessary, then that's the next step. And I'm thankful that I spotted that on the first CT scan this year. Because no doctor said anything. <laughs> CT scan of my lungs. Uh, checking to see if those nodules have grown and if they are thyroid cancer. The answer is to both those, no. No sign of metastatic disease in my chest. Thank God for that. Are there any other announcements? And again, my demise was exaggerated. Any other announcements this morning? I got one. Yes, sir. Tomorrow night, maybe I shouldn't do it, but I'm going to. I'm kind of proud of this. Canapolis History Associates meet at Abraham Basement. And the guest speaker tomorrow night is talking about the rise and fall of cannon mills, if anybody's interested. And the guest speaker tomorrow night is me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, uh, but I'm limited to one hour. Take your own one. One hour. One hour, I'm limited. So they're, they're, hopefully it'll be real well. It's a PowerPoint presentation, but if you want to learn what I think the reason cannon deals fail, come join us. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Uh, we have in the bulletin that the Joy Group will go out to eat tomorrow night. That's going to be postponed, postponed to a later date, but not tomorrow. Yes, ma'am. Uh, just want to remind everybody that next week is Pop Off Sunday, and we would like to see the biggest crowd that we've ever had out to walk at uh, Kimball Memorial Lutheran Church in Annapolis. Um, 1.30, is that right? Is that right, Jim? 1.30. I'd like to add, I will have t-shirts here <coughs> next Sunday, probably on this pew here. Everybody that's walking that's supposed to get a shirt, please come by after the service and pick up your shirts. And it is good to have the Rayfords here with us this morning, the World Travelers, as I call them this morning. And correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, Dave, they flew out from Lisbon, Portugal yesterday. 20 hours. And he's here with us, or they are here with us this morning. She can sleep, I can't. <laughs> I can't sleep on a plane either. I thought about here. <laughs> oh, here! <laughs> well, you probably got, got about 20 minutes. <laughs> Any other announcements? Yes, Janice.
And some may ask, uh, some may ask what they need. I have a one word answer. Everything. Everything. They need everything. We can give money. Yes. And just write it to the church and put disaster on it. Any others? Any other announcements? I have a phrase. Go right ahead.
see you. Are there any joys or prayer concerns this morning? Raise your hands high so Jerry can find you with the mic. I have a prayer concern for Diana. She uh, stumped her foot last night and is in a lot of pain and couldn't be with us today. Remember Diana, any others? Raise your hands high so Jerry can get people. Some cases you may need to stand. <laughs> I don't need to stand. Uh, I want to uh, Ask that we pray for our son Doug. Doug, and he was in the hospital two nights this week. He's he's doing fine now, right. and also Betty. Uh, she got a report back, and we still don't know when she's going to be able to have uh, hip surgery. Well, we're, we pray that that will come about quickly and heal quickly. Con continue to remember Rodney. He's just very weak. Yes, Rodney, remember him? Raise your hands high if you have a prayer request or a praise. I love my mommy and dad. <laughs> yes. Thomas, he's back in the hospital. The chemo he was on didn't have the desired effect. And we sent him off on Friday. We had a big party for him. And I would just like to, everyone to pray for him. Yes, remember Thomas. Any others? Um, just for the pray for the hospital systems, along with the devastation that went on and went on in Western North Carolina. One of the huge plants that manufactures IV fluids was in that area. And so now we could potentially be facing fluid shortages. So having to make arrangements, hope that we can get extra supply from other places, but it could put, potentially put a burden on hospital systems as well. Remember them and also everyone in Western North Carolina who has lost homes and family, everything they own. Just thankful for our church. This is homecoming. Just thankful what this church yes. has meant to to us now, but in, in, in long past, you know, it's been a, been around a good while. So just thankful for this church and our community. You know, we're very thankful where we live. And I just want to lift that up. Um, remember the family of Frankie Pethel. I know uh, many of you know her. She passed away this week. And just remember her family. I think the funeral's going to be Wednesday at Whitley's. And uh, just remember, and stay uh, doing that message. Uh, just remember, if we have one year ago tomorrow was the devastation and the, and the war that started in Israel. So just remember those people because it's been a year long. Uh, God's chosen people. Yes. And for the troops to get made in there. Um, just the praise. You know how old I am, but that's fine. Um, I had my 52nd class reunion last night. And it was so much fun just to see people and talk to them and see where they are in their life. And, of course, I had to show very many pictures. And um, so I really enjoyed that. But I was heartbroken when I looked at the sign there and uh, saw the classmates we had lost. And in that period of time, we lost 50. And um, so that's... That's heartfelt. There were a lot that couldn't be there that were out of town and things like that. But it's, it's good to go back and revisit those times in your life. I just want to say um, a joy when my medicine is working so good for me. And, <laughs> and um, I just want to say how good it is to see this sanctuary so full of people. Just look around at yourselves. I mean, this is just amazing what this church has done this year. And look at our beautiful, 
new banner and our new sign out front. We saw the men working hard on that yesterday when we were here practicing. Um, so we're just so blessed, blessed to be in this place. And it's good to have David and Beverly with us this morning. Yes, so yes it is. Welcome home. <laughs> Any other? I still want to give a prayer request for my son Andrew. He has now decided he's moving, but to a different location in Arizona, and that he'll find jobs as he moves and finds a new place. And also, Allison and Jason, because they were up there at noon this weekend, all weekend, working, and when they came to pick the boys up, they were crying. Both of them still because of the devastation that's going on. And her request was, don't forget them. This is great, what we're doing now. But in the months to come, in a year to come, they need you. Yes. I'll continue to remember me amongst all the CT scans we also had to bury a dear family member, uh, a dear aunt, a lost remember my family. Any others? I'm not going to use the mic, but what you were talking about with Israel and what's going on there, all those people that have been kidnapped and are still don't know where they are. I think there's about 101 or some of them that may be still in tunnels. No telling what they're going through. We need to remember them in prayer. Too. Yes, yes. I have another prayer of concern for our next door neighbor. Uh, Miss Betty File, she lost her son in a car accident recently, and he was buried um, this past Wednesday. If y'all don't mind, I know some of you don't know me, but um, amidst all the prayer requests and the destruction, if I could just have 20 seconds, I'd like to share a yes. feel-good, true-life story that I think is a miracle. Um, I, we have linked up with the Gold Hill Fire Department because that's where I serve in Gold Hill. And we've done, that fire department's done enormous things. But the biggest story in my heart, which I actually preached on this morning, um, there's a young man, and when I say young man, I'm thinking, they're thinking 15 or 16. And from day one, as soon as supplies got in, he was there, and he is just picking up insulin and running it up to his elderly people that cannot get out of their house. He comes back, he picks up some blood pressure medicine to take to those that are trapped in their house. All day from sun up to sundown, this young man is running up and down the mountain, being the hands and feet of Jesus. And there's so many, of course his name's Jonathan, I'm a little partial to that name, um, but there's so many that are doing that, and I think we all need to thank God for all the Jonathans that are running the unsung heroes in my mind. It just was a heart story for me. Yes, any others? Just so you know, this is, this is homecoming, and as you see, it is also World Communion Sunday. We might go a minute or so over, but don't worry about it. Put your watches in your pockets. And to make up for that, we will feed you after service. So please stay and enjoy lunch with us as well. Any others? If you have an unspoken request, but would still like to give it to God, let it be known by your sign of surrender. Lord, it has been a difficult week, but you have been there every step of the way. And knowing this, we know that we can truly surrender all. Let us pray. Father, first of all, thank you. We praise your holy name for who you are. Our God, the author and finisher of our faith, the creator, our Heavenly Father, the great physician. There are many names that you are called by. And we thank you and praise you for all of them. Father, 
western part of our state, many other states throughout the southeast have been devastated by Hurricane Helene. Bless those people. But Father God, remind us that you work through us. Move us to help. Move us to donate. Move us to be your servants in the midst of devastation. Remind us, dear Father, that once again you are the great physician and we have heard your children's petitions for those who are sick, for those who may be facing surgeries, for those who might be facing heart catheterizations, for those who are facing cancer, where the chemo did not have the desired effects. Great physician, we ask that you move and touch and heal according to your perfect plan. Father, wherever people may be today, that may be facing problems with mental health, whether it's depression, bipolar, schizophrenia, whatever it may be, give them the courage to seek help. And give us the wisdom to know that the brain is an organ, just like any other organ, and it is a disease. And help us get rid of that stigma that is attached to it. Give us the courage to stand up in the face of evil and call evil just that, evil. Give us the wisdom to know your voice, to know your guidance, and to praise you for it. Now, Father, we thank you for the Rayfords who have come here today to, to worship with us, to break the bread of life with us, and to fellowship with us. Thank you for getting them home safely. Now, Father, I leave all these petitions, whether spoken or unspoken, in your hands, and we claim them done by praying in the manner in which your Son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. As you are able, please stand as we reaffirm our faith using the traditional Apostles' Creed located on page 881 in your hymns. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
your blessings upon it. We also ask that you bless those who gave and those who were unable to give. Let this offering be used for the spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout our community, our country, and our world. And let the church say, Amen. Amen. Our children will please come. <coughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Asher's not paying me attention. Hey, good morning, Asher. Good morning. All right, I have something here. A fishing pole. That's me. Can I have a I need to do I have a fishing story to tell you. We used to because I can't keep my mouth shut <laughs> and I get bored and when I catch something I make a loud noise and I jump up and down and scream and holler and all the fish run away but I did catch a big fish one time and I think it weighed 10 pounds now my husband will tell you that it did not weigh 10 pounds but it did because it was really hard to pull in. And I really didn't catch a big old fish. But I don't fish a whole bunch because I don't know what kind of fish it was. All I know it was a fish. I don't know it was a different kind. But anyway, we well, got a fishing story today. Okay, it wasn't a shark. And uh, I want you to listen. Uh, I'm not really going to cast this or anything. I just wanted to bring it so you could see I know what I'm talking about. Okay, we're going to talk about a guy named Dennis. Okay? We talk about a guy named Dennis. Dennis loved to go fishing. And his favorite place to fish was in the river near his home. There was a place in the river where it got very wide and the water moved very slowly. Dennis would take his little boat down to that spot and put it in the water. He'd load all his fishing gear in the boat and then he'd row out into the river. Now, there was a big rock out there and in the river, in the river. And when he got out there, not too far from shore, he would take a rope and he'd tie his boat to that rock to keep his boat from drifting away. Oh. Now, I don't know if you really do that or not, That's but Dennis did it. Dennis what did it. the time when they park their boats on the deck, at the deck? They tie a rope to yeah. the boat. That's they tie a rope to the, like a pillar to the boat. Okay. They park their boats at the deck. Okay. All right. When he put, uh, then he put a worm on his hook. He cast out into the river. And he, and he waited and he waited and there weren't any fish biting. So I guess he got a little bit bored. Well, well a couple hours went by. And without even a nibble, well, Dennis got bored well, and he fell he asleep. Was, well, we was at the um, pond uh -huh. and we caught a big brim. A big brim. Okay. While he was asleep, guess what happened? Boys, guess what happened when he fell asleep? I bet his boat drifted away. The boat came on time. So the boat started drifting downstream. It drifted slowly at first, but the further downstream it went, the faster it went, and faster and faster and faster. 
Just as the boat was approaching the rapids, where there were lots of big rocks in the river, Dennis woke up. Right then, the boat hit a big rock, and it turned upside down. Dennis somehow hung onto the inside of the boat and rode it downstream until it finally got caught on the sandbar. Okay? As you can imagine, Dennis learned a valuable well, lesson that, that day. Well, that boat wreck is going to stay there forever. Okay. Maybe not fishing that spot. Okay. He learned a valuable lesson. He learned to always make sure that his boat was tied tightly to that rock. He did never want to drift away again. Now, we as Christians can learn a lot from that story. The Bible tells us that we have a rock that we need to stay connected to. Psalm 94 says, My God is the rock in whom I take refuge. God is our rock. We need to stay connected to God or else we'll drift away. Just like Dennis did. Drift away into evil. And Paul tells us exactly how to stay connected to the Lord. He says, pray continuously. We need to pray every day to keep connected to our rock, the Lord. And today is homecoming. And this is one way that we're staying connected to God. We've all come back. A lot of us grew up in this church. Some of us didn't. We've invited families and friends. And we are staying connected to God. Coming back on homecoming Sunday, and a former minister, wherever he's at, <laughs> back here. and his wife have come back to remember all the good times we had together and all the memories we had as we were growing up and the many, many good times that we're going to have in the future. But what? we've got to my stay cat. connected well, to my, that rock, which well, is my God. My cat died. Oh, it's a brown cat. Fresh. That is fresh. Heavenly Father, be with each one of these children. They're precious. We love each one of them, and we're so thankful that they're here in our church. Uh, God, and direct them and help them to get through the week and to come back next week and have many, many good things that they can tell us and share with us about their day and about their week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Good morning. Oh, y'all sing again? Tired of us already? I was waiting on the mountain. I'm just a
first date at home, your first date at church. <laughs> Yeah, I know, preacher, if you look at the bulletin, you'll know. <laughs> I'm used to one song. Get in the Travelwitch tells you how to drive or put a Only if you need it. Moving right along. <laughs> I got one thing to say about that. Thank you, Jesus. I thank God for this church. I thank God for all of you. You have been such a blessing in my life in the past Five years you have stood by me in times of sickness and health, and I just thank God for each and every one of you. I love you all. God bless you. But I also thank Jesus for a man of God who I know is tired this morning, but still said, even though I'm going to travel from Spain the day before, I will still come and preach the word of God for the day. So good to be here this morning. I do want to correct one thing about our trip home from yesterday. Before Jeannie corrects you, we came home from Lisbon, Portugal yesterday, not Spain. We went on a cruise a couple weeks ago, first time we've really done this. So we've been through the southern part of France, all around Spain, to the Rock of Straits of Gibraltar, to Portugal, we've been gone two weeks. A lot has happened in those two weeks. Um, a couple things I'll, I'd like to share with you. Uh, one, it's just so great to be here for those who don't know me. Uh, my wife Jeannie and I moved here in 2010, and 1st of July of 2010, and we were here uh, through 2015. And we're glad, always glad to be back, and it's always so good to see all my friends and people I recognize, but it's even better to see people that I don't recognize, which means that this church does have the Holy Spirit moving within it and is back on track um, to being what God intends you to be. There's been a lot of moving words about the about the storm that we followed on TV the best we could uh, from a ship out wherever we were. And we know how serious it's been and appreciate all your stories. There's going to be many more to come. I'd like just to share one little thought that uh, when we left uh, two weeks ago, storm came, my son David Jr., David works for Duke Energy, and he's a manager in accounting, but they asked him to go to Asheville area last Sunday to help logistically uh, bring in a lot of the trucks, linemen from all over the world country, and he was stationed, has been stationed at the airport in Asheville. We haven't talked to him directly. We did see one uh, Post he put on Facebook, some of y'all saw the same post, and he said, where I am, it's not that bad where I am, but the stories we receive from the linemen who come in each night, the stories, the true stories are much, much worse, Dad, than you could see on the news, and we all know that, and my heart goes out to all of you who respond, and as so many have said already, it's going to be a long, a long, long time. Just like if you remember when Katrina hit Louisiana and Mississippi, we were sending people there for years, and it's going to take that and more, I think, but my prayer goes out, and very selfishly, I'm reminding myself there's no clock back there, so I'm okay. That's what I used to tell y'all when I was here. Um, there's a big joy in Jenny and I's heart because two Sundays ago, and yes, we missed this, was the one year 
anniversary of the church we attend beginning uh, a global Methodist church. Our story goes a little bit different than y'all's as we had a vote the last possible Sunday you could have a vote and our church chose not to disaffiliate by two votes. We lost by, we had 66.2% or something like that and we needed 67%. So we went to the beach. We were heading out and about, so apparently about this time of year we traveled. And anyway, when we got back there, we went to church, there were not many people there and the bulk of the people who lost the vote had left and they formed their own and new Global Methodist Church. Two Sundays ago on September 22nd was the one year anniversary of that church. And as, well, they have an earlier service, but today that we've been meeting in the Masonic Lodge in Men Hill, North Carolina, suburb of Charlotte. And today was our first Sunday in our new sanctuary, which the Catholics needed a larger one. They moved out and we have purchased or are purchasing the Catholic uh, sanctuary. Very, very nice. By God's grace, we'll purchase it. Uh, but wonderful things are happening. Praise the Lord. By the grace of God. I was inspired by, by the Global Methodist here. Um, finally, and this is more to Joel than to y'all. He did call. I told him we were we literally left our motel yesterday morning at 3:15 a.m. to make a 20-hour journey back home, including some, a layover or two. And we, we have made it. Uh, Joel, if I fall asleep, come nudge me. If my leg gives out, somebody come pick me up. And my voice gives out, which it never has. Somebody come and nudge me closer to the microphone. If y'all are willing to do that, I'm willing to preach for you this morning. So it's, uh, it is a joy to be here. And I welcome all those online who have no idea who I am and I'm still, hopefully still online. This morning, before I read our scripture, I'd like to give you a little bit of background we're going to read from 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, and the 10th chapter following that. We're going a little bit backwards, but the, we think that these are the first recorded words of Jesus Christ, and if not one of the first in, in these letters, because the letters of Paul were really written before uh, the Gospels, of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Paul's letter to the Corinthians was one of his earliest letters. So what we're about to hear, scholars believe, are the first words of Jesus that somebody wrote down. I invite you to stand as you're able as I read from the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians, beginning with the 23rd verse. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this, whatever you drink it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, I will begin with the 15th verse. I speak to sensible people, Paul writes. Judge for yourselves what I say. Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ. It is not the bread that we break, a participation in the body of Christ. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated.
Please join me in prayer. Lord God, on this World Communion Sunday, open our hearts to hear things that we haven't heard before, to understand things that we haven't understood before, and God, show us clearly how we're calling, how you are calling us to be involved in your mission to the world. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This morning, I want to speak a few minutes about Missio Dei, a Latin term meaning the mission of God. It's a theological concept that emphasizes that the mission that we are part of is not our own mission, but God's mission. God is on this mission. God is on a mission of reconciliation and restoration. And God's mission, it's God's mission, not ours. God initiates and we participate. So we are partnering, partnering with God as God reaches out to save the world. What I'm about to say is amplified by what we've talked about this morning already about Western North Carolina. But I also want to reflect on some of the ways that Mount Mitchell continues to make a difference in Kannapolis, your community, and the world. Your continued support for CCM and Rowan Helping Ministries, the Prayer Shaw Ministry, feeding the hungry at Samaritan's Purse, Samaritan's Table on the fifth Thursday of every month, the Christmas in July toy drive for the Empty Stocking Fund, adopting a needy family at Thanksgiving, feeding the policemen and firemen appreciation meals, providing snacks to Hospice House, Support for the students and teachers at two elementary schools. The Cabarrus Crop Walk, which is coming up. Jim, when I was here, Jim introduced me to the Crop Walk and somehow got me on the board of the thing for the count, Cabarrus County. And we had good participation and I appreciate what all y'all were doing there. The gift to Jesus. things that you all should be excited about because you're seeing how God is using Mount Mitchell to make a difference in the world. I hope you're excited, but you know what? Some of you probably aren't as excited as others. Some of you might be feeling a little bit overwhelmed by that long list that I, I just went over that Janice provided for me and many or not most is what you've been doing for many years now. But some are feeling overwhelmed by all the needs and all the projects and, and now we hear of this great need in the mountains which is a true need will be here forever for a long time. All the agencies we support, you support all the organizations, all the missionaries and all the requests for money and all the requests for volunteers. You might be feeling a little bit overwhelmed. You might be thinking it's just too much. I can't. I can't do all this. I don't have the time. I don't have the money. I don't have the energy. So I ask you to listen carefully what I'm about to say because I'm about to say something that you won't hear most preachers say, Joel, cover your ears. I wouldn't want to hear it when I was pastor here, but I'm retired so I can say things like this. <laughs> Get ready. Here it is. It's all right to say no. It's all right to say no. God is not asking each and every one of you to do everything. It's not your job to save the world. Remember, I said we're here to hear about Missio Dei, the mission of who? The mission of God. John 3, 16 and 17 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. And then verse 17 follows that God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but to do what? Save. To save the world through him. So I want you to participate, at least show me that you are listening this far. So 
I want everybody to say this after me. It's not my job to save the world. It's not my job to save the world. But I also want you to hear this just as much, just as clear. It is not our jobs individually to save the world, but it's our responsibility, our responsibility to save the world. And it's your job to find out what part that you must play, the, what part God wants you to play. You don't have to do everything, but you do need to do something. Some, if not many, say, I can't do anything but sit home and pray. You know, that's one of the most important things you can do. Can do. But we need to do that in addition to all the other things we may be able to do. But prayer is honestly one of the most important jobs of the church. And you have your prayer list on the back of the bulletin. I know y'all have an active prayer list. Y'all certainly list Jeannie and I many times since we've been gone, and we appreciate that. It lists some of the things on the back of your bulletin. I just read it. A little better than Joel did, but I just read it. <laughs> I love you, brother. <laughs> and there's a lot of action items for each group in this church and things that you can do. There's a lot of things going on in Mount Mitchell. And praying for all your ministries and praying for all the things and the world's needs and just lifting it up to God. If you do nothing else and just say, God, I beg you, help us do what we can do. But there is something that each one of you can do. I love what Stephen Covey says. Stephen Covey says it's easy to say no when there's a deeper yes burning within. So, so what I'm asking you to do this morning is to find that yes. Find your yes. Find your deep yes. Find your, to use the biblical image, find your burning bushes. Discover how God's calling you to be involved and then pour yourself into that with all that you have. I'd much rather see you pour yourself passionately into the one or two or more things you know God is calling you to do than to say no to the other things. I'd rather see you do that than say yes in a kind of mediocre, piddly way to do a lot of things. Find your yes. Find your burning bush. So you don't have to do everything, but you have to do something. It's not your job to save the world. It's God's job. God is on the mission to save the world. God does have a plan. And God is encouraging each of us to be a part of his effort. God does have a part for each and every one of you to play in his plan to save the world. Now you say, how do I know what my part is? How do I find my burning bush? Well, that's where spiritual practices are so important. And this is why I'm talking about Missio Dei, the mission of God. We're not just talking about the mission of the church to go out and do nice things. We're not just talking about you getting up tomorrow morning and say, you know what, I'm going to be a better person. I'm going to go out and do some nice things. That's not what we're talking about. If you do that, you simply are going to burn yourself out. We're talking about you participating with God and doing what God wants you to do. And the way God knows how to do that is through spiritual practices. Spiritual practices are so important to the mission of God. If we're going to be on God's mission, not just your own initiative, if we're going to do what God is calling us to do, then we must listen to God. We must seek God's direction. We must be filled with God's power. And spiritual practices are how to do that. Now what are spiritual practices? And how can we maintain a close, deep relationship with God through which God directs us and guides us and empowers us to be a part of his mission? 
Daily spiritual practices are vital for us to follow his mission. And these are things like worshiping God, Bible study, prayer continuously, fellowship with other Christians, like participating together in Holy Communion. Holy Communion is vital to the Maseo Dei, and Holy Communion is a big deal. I think most people, if you ask them what Holy Communion is, you can think about what you might say, but most people across the world would say, yeah, that's when we go and eat a little piece of bread and we maybe wash it down with a little bit less drink and juice. And we think about Jesus and we remember that Jesus died for us. Now it is all that. Jesus said to us, do this in remembrance of me. Remembering things is a big deal in the Bible. There are so many places where God says, I'm giving you this meal, the Passover, and I want you to eat the Passover once a year and remember that I set you free from slavery. And there's places in the Bible where God says, set up a pile of stones and every time you pass those stones, remember what I did for you. There are places or times where God says, save these words and sing them so we all can hear and know. Remembering is a big deal. It's, excuse me, it's important. And so, yes, that's one thing that happens in Holy Communion, remembering, but there's more. You've got that Bible open, I'm sure. Let's look from 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six, where Paul writes, As often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death. What? Until he comes. So in communion we remember, we look back to see what Jesus has done, but we also look forward. We look forward, Paul says, to proclaim the Lord's day until he comes. Until he comes again and defeats evil in every form. When we take participate in Holy Communion, we look forward to the culmination of the mission, mission of God. We look forward to the day when God's kingdom comes and God's will is done on earth as it is in heaven. When we take Holy Communion, we look forward to the day where death and mourning and crying and pain are no more. God wipes every tear from our eyes. And in Holy Communion, we look forward to the day when the one who defeated death comes again and defeats evil in every form. So in Holy Communion we remember that's a big deal. In Holy Communion we look forward and that's a big deal as well. But there's more. I read from chapter 10 verse 16, the cup of blessing that we bless is, not a share, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? And let me talk to you about this word sharing. The original Greek word is koinonia. It literally means a common bond, a common investment. It refers to the deep relationship between people who have something very important in common. You may have heard the word before, maybe not. It was real trendy back in the 70s and 80s to name Sunday school classes, the koinonia Sunday school class, where it could be translated also, in the word participation, can also be translated fellowship. And so, so Paul is saying that we break the bread, we drink the cup, and when we do that, it's a participation in the body and blood of Christ. Now, here's the thing. What Paul is saying is this is more than an intellectual exercise. This is more than just thinking about what Jesus did and thinking about what Jesus is going to do. Something powerful and mysterious is going on here. In Holy Communion, we have intimate fellowship with Jesus. Brothers and sisters, this morning, this is more than just a snack before we go have a bigger meal. In some special way that we can't explain, Christ is really going to be present in the bread and wine. In Communion, we remember, we look forward, we have intimate fellowship with Jesus but there's more. Look at verse 17. Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body. We all partake of the one bread. 
in Holy Communion, we have intimate fellowship with one another. We have intimate fellowship with each other, whatever else we are. Yes, we're Christians, but some are black and some are white and some are rich and some are poor. Some are educated, some not educated. Male, female, Jew, Greek, slave, as we're told in the Bible. African, Asian, Hispanic, European, whatever else we are, dare I say, two comparisons. Even the Republicans and Democrats, we're Christians and we need to be together. How hard that is to say. And even the Global Methodists and the United Methodists, we have to come together. Although much of the work is finished, now we each have to go on to our own mission. And look at, when we come to this table, we are one in Jesus Christ because we're all just hungry sinners in need of God's grace. One bread, one body. And the powerful thing is, is that this is happening all around the world this morning as Christians come to the Lord's table. Christians are receiving Holy Communion, I'll go out on a limb this morning in Gold Hill, North Carolina. We did. And I had somebody to talk to if you didn't. <laughs> but all over the world, people we understand, people we don't, people we love as Christians, people we not may not like a lot otherwise, we're all coming together and we're remembering and we're looking forward to what Jesus is going to do and then we're going to have an intimate relationship with Jesus and each of us this morning as we partake in this holy, holiest of meals, we're going to have an intimate relationship with one another. It might end not long after we end our communion, but it's absolutely vital to the Messio Dei, the mission of God. So it's very fitting that we celebrate homecoming on World Communion Sunday. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Before we get started with communion, can everyone hear me? If not, I can get louder. Okay. <laughs> We're going to try to do things a little differently to try to cut down on congestion in the middle of the aisle. I will have the choir come first, along with the director and the pianist to come first. That way they can get back up there and play the music as everyone else comes. And uh, then if we, our ushers, after they have come, if they will have the congregation come one or two rows at a time, not everybody at once. That way there won't be congestion up here. And when the last person that they have brought up goes back, then the next couple of rows will come and go back. That way it'll go a little smoother, I think. We'll see. Follow along in, on page 15 and 16 in your head books. The Lord be with you. Also lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You have made from one every nation and people to live on all the face of the earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, and heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, 
by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. He commissioned us to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth and to make disciples of all nations. And today, his family and all the world is joining at his holy table. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, do this as often as you do it. Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is the, my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, Christ, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with your church throughout the world, and strengthen it in every nation and among every people to witness faithfully in your name. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
And we do have two ways. We have the cups here as well if you do not wish to.
to me, sir. God bless you. As you are able, let us please stand and sing hymn number 3105 in the green book. 3105. <laughs> salvation to us. Now, Father, bless the food that we are going to partake. 
Let it nourish our bodies as your word nourished our soul. In the name of Christ Jesus, let all God's children say, Amen.